a good thing. And so Remembrance Sunday is with us, and I love this Sunday, and I love the idea that on this Sunday we are invited to think about there's only one life, and it is a whole life, and it is God life, and it is perfect, and it is my life now, and always is, was, and will be. One life. So we get to look at that, and we get to look at life as everlasting life. And we all now know that our everlasting life is being lived right here and right now, and that there is no sweet by and by. It's always now. It's never anything else but now. It's always here, it's always now that you and I experience life and live our lives. And so it all blends very beautiful into this uh, celebration of life and light and love continuing, continuing, and us getting a deeper sense and awareness of its everlastingness. Why? Because life is omnipresent here and now. So we no longer have to relegate our loved ones who have gone before us off into a faraway galaxy somewhere out there floating around in, in the ethers. But understand, as Ernest Holmes always reminded us, that the veil between the two dimensions is very, very thin, and that our loved ones are all around us and all about us. In fact, they're in the very air we breathe. That's how close and present they are to us. Now, the great sense of sadness and loss and bereavement comes from the fact that they're invisible to us. They, are, they have become invisible to the human eye, but they can be sensed in the heart and are. And I'm sure every single one of us in this room has had a sense of somebody who has gone before us being present to us in some unique way. Uh, actually, it's very commonplace it really and truly is, it's a common thing, and you and I have that capacity to be present to our loved ones who have gone on into an expanded and refined uh, dimension of life in consciousness. And so, Ernest Holmes invites us all to get over our sense of morbidity when it comes to this thing that we call death. And he says that that is a great impediment to us and keeps us in fear. And everyone by now who's anyone in the psychology field or the metaphysical field will tell us there is only one fear. And out of the one fear, all other fears emerge. And the one fear is fear of death. And gosh, oh golly gee, if we only understood what that was, we will be chomping at the bit to get over there on the other side of this thing called this life here and now, especially during this particular year, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. And um, uh, you see, here's the thing. What brings that home to me more fully was the story that John O'Donohue tells in his wonderful book, Anamkara, and it's the story of perhaps, he, he just gives us a scenario. He says, think about this. He says, we're all trying to figure out what this thing called death is like. Well, think about a baby in the womb. A baby in the womb just before it's about to be born. And that baby is very comfortable, very cozy, very secure. It's in a beautiful, perfect environment and all is well. And then someone comes to the baby and says, guess what? short space of time, you're going to be out of here. <laughs> you're going to be separated from your mother, and you are going to be pushed through a very, very narrow, narrow, narrow space. It's going to be so claustrophobic and, and pressured that you're going to think you're dying. But wait, there's more. <laughs> when you do get expelled out there from your mother's womb, you'll be in this very harsh light in a place that's very strange to you, full of noises. And more than that, they're going to cut you off the supply of your nourishment 
by cutting the umbilical unifying cord that keeps you close to your mother. Well, you can imagine what the baby would be thinking in the womb, <laughs> putting on the brakes, saying, I'm not going into that dark night. I'm not going down that tunnel. I'm not doing it, I tell you. I don't want to be separated from my source. I don't want to be separated from my mother. I don't want to leave this perfectly okay, comfortable, thank you very much place. And yet, and yet, when the baby acclimatizes to this new experience of such expansion of its world opening up like a little duckling breaking through the shell of an egg out into all of this amazing experience, it realizes, oh my gosh, oh golly gee, I didn't lose my mother after all, I didn't die. I'm in this great big playpen. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Well, it's kind of similar with us thinking about death. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I'm not going. I'm not going gently into that night. Why? Because like the baby, we couldn't see what was on the other side. We didn't know what was on the other side. We didn't know what was awaiting us. And so we wanted to stay put where we were in the situation that we did know that was familiar to us. And it was terrifying thinking of going anywhere else. And so we need to get over, get over the morbidity attached to the most significant point of our lives on this plane, the real graduation. When we go over the other side and throw the tassel up and say, hooray, party time, party time, party time. It's a phenomenal experience. Now, it doesn't look like that, and the appearance of it rarely has that. But nevertheless, the soul knows exactly when that moment is. And we will go at our soul's desire when our soul has uh, informed us that we're, we've done everything we came here to do, and it's time now to really take a rest, take a break, have a party, have a much more expanded awareness of life. And it doesn't matter what the ego is doing or how the ego appears in the body, no matter what the struggle seems to be, the soul is perfectly content and the soul is getting ready to just soar. And that's the experience that you and I can have. Now, how do we get there? How do we get there? And there's only one great way of getting into that point where we're quite happy about transitioning into our next experience. Always, too, knowing that we have the love and the support of those who have gone before us and that they are the cheerleaders on the other side and they're the ones, you know, all ready to party with us and so on and that we will not be doing this on our own. We never, ever, ever are born on our own. We at least need our moms. And we never, ever, ever transition alone. Never. We have plenty of help from the other side. And so the way that you and I can come to that in a poised and in an eager and peaceful, grace-filled way is to be really become practiced in the art of letting go now. By now taking on the practice of becoming real black belters in the art of letting go, letting go, letting go. What causes us the grief and what causes us the pain is the egoic tendency to be a cling-on, to be clingy and not want change and not want to go anywhere other than where we are. And so we practice that. And indeed, as the great writers all tell us, you know, um, we die a little every day. We get an opportunity every day to die to all kinds of things. And what causes, gives us that opportunity are all the negative experiences that we have in our lives. And um, we can either, you know, cling to those or we can in sweet surrender, relax, release, and let them go and come through that uh, more enlivened as a result of it. So the letting go begins from the time we come into the world and the time 
we truly begin to take on the practice of non-attachment anymore, not being so attached. And it's an amazing thing. As we grow in wisdom and years and grace, we become less attached to certain ways of being. And it just seems to be something that automatically happens. And when you see people reach a certain uh, a golden age, they stop collecting anymore. And actually, they start giving away. And it's, it's an unconscious thing. They just stop collecting anymore. What was a fierce, you know, uh, wonderful habit of theirs to collect some one thing or another, regardless of what it is, they stop doing that. They enjoy what they have, and then they start releasing them and giving them away. It's sort of a natural rhythm of life. And so you and I are called now today and this week to first and foremostly appreciate the deep and unabiding um, 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 uh, tendency um, to, to, you know, to get and give and get and give and get and get and get and get and get until we get to give and give and give and give and give. And we do that circular dance with that all of the time until we come to the point where we're satisfied. We have enough and you like it, you want it, it's yours. It, it gets to be that good as far as releasing and letting go. And then we're celebrating this week those people who have supported us in our lives, sometimes since we're knee high to a grasshopper, sometimes since we were birthed, and in more recent times and other times. We're celebrating those beautiful people, those beautiful energies of light and light and love that are still on our side, still cheering us on, still supporting us, still there for us, still very close to us, closer than our breath. And uh, to, to have that sense of sensibility that I am never alone, I'm never isolated, I'm never separated, I'm never on my own, never, ever, ever. I am surrounded and I am supported by that grace of love and the energies it, that were individualized as that love while they were here on this plane still remaining and still supporting me. And we've all had that sense and we do have that sense. I've, you know, my mother is all the time around and about and so on and so forth, etc. Yeah. And, and so it's a, it's a comfort to us all to know this. It's a comfort to us all to know this. So what you and I could start really deeply embracing the practice of is the releasing and the letting go of all negative tendencies and all negative thoughts, words, deeds, and, and blah, 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 and blah. And I don't have to spell it out because each and every one of us knows what for me individually I must come to terms with and be able to release and let go of so that I can free myself up and I can uh, raise up all of that beautiful energy that I'm stopping and blocking through uh, non-release of whatever, and we all know what we, we, we could release, um, and feel that lightness of being, and feel that lightness of being now, and loosen ourselves up and free ourselves up and offload all the luggage that begins to be regrets with us toward the end of our days on this plane, and the, the wishes that if only, if only, and if I had, and all of that. We don't want that in that moment. We want to arrive at that moment feeling, you know, all oh, my loose ends are tied up, I'm okay with it all. Uh, you know, been there, done that, and I really did buy the t-shirt, and it's a good one too, but I'm ready to go on to bigger and better experiences. I really, really am. Because it's a good thing. It's not not a good thing. It's a very good thing. It's just life progressing as it's supposed to. Look at all of nature. There is constant death and rebirth and death and rebirth and death and rebirth, what we call death. And you know, I love when I read the words, you know, our birth is a sleep and a forgetfulness on clouds of glory we come from God, who is our home. And heaven is all around and about us in our infancy. And in this thing called transition, our star goes down only to rise upon a fairer shore. 
What is it we don't get about that? Why can't we hear that? Why is it we cannot hear that so that we can feel that and believe that? What is it that sucks out of us our desire to truly know that and allow that and be one with that and feel that there's one life and that life is whole life and that life is perfect and that life is God life and that life is mine now and everlastingly and life is omnipresent, everywhere present. And that is why when Meister Eckert was asked, where did the dead go? His response was nowhere. Where would they go? There's nowhere to go. They're here. They're all around. They're all about. Omnipresence. They're not gone anywhere. You just can't see them. Just can't see them. And it's like the priest and the friend in Ireland, as again John O'Donoghue explained, uh, they, they tended to go on, they like to go on hikes and walks and things like that. And uh, there's always been a great tradition in, in the Celtic races to honor and respect your druids and your priests and, and to think of them in ways that um, they are more accessible to the portal that opens between the two worlds than the rest of us. Just the thought. Not necessarily true, but that's what the thinking was. So they're walking out and the friend says to the priest, you know, I want, to, I want to know all about this thing about death. I want to see the dead. And how do I get to see the dead? And the priest says, don't be asking such questions. I can't answer those questions for you. Don't ask those questions. But he pesters them and pesters them and pesters them. Eventually, the priest says, OK, all right, already. I will show you the dead. But this is an experience for you and for you alone. And you must not share it with anybody. And even if you do, they won't believe you. So the priest says, okay, and he raises his arm, and he says, look over my arm, and the man does. And everywhere, every, everywhere, there are these souls, the presence of these souls everywhere, everywhere. And he's astounded. He's astounded. And so the whole idea is behind that, Life is. Life is here. Life is now. It always is here and now, and it goes nowhere. It doesn't go anywhere. It's here. It's just transformed into a higher vibration, more refined in its vibration. And it has the experience of higher vibration and is advanced in a deeper understanding and knowledge and awareness of who and what each one is. But knowing more clearly and fully that there's only one life and that all life is connected. And each individual one of us is indeed the breath and the breath of God, is indeed the pulse and the pulse of God, is indeed the image and the likeness of the creator, is indeed full full of trailing glory. When you came in here, you were trailing glory. And guess what? You're still trailing glory. And everywhere you go, you are trailing glory, whether you know it, whether you see it, whether you feel it or not. You are trailblazers of glory, and the light is with you everywhere you are, regardless of what's going on in your egoic experience of life and living, regardless of how shut down we may be to the truth of our being, regardless of how unconscious we are of it, we are trailing clouds of glory, the true essence and energy of our being. And it never, ever stops or becomes anything else. It never ceases. The light is what you are. The truth is what you are. The fire is what you are. The glory is what you are. Now what we have to do is get up, get out, and be that trailing glory because God knows the world needs a bit of trailing glory right now. And you are the trailing glory. And so it is.